<laughs> give it up for that swing, everybody. Give it up, give it up, give it up. Come on, stop clapping like a bunch of pussies. Yeah. What the fuck? What's going on? How are you guys? Is everyone here? I love how everyone's whispering at the loudest. Like, yo, I swear to God, did you see that one guy? You know, it's crazy to park here. It's, uh, nah, it's crazy. You know, bar shows, you know what I mean? A lot of internet dating in here, a lot of internet dating, you know? But in real life, bar dating is kind of worse almost, right? It's like messaging on Hinge in all caps. <laughs> what are you doing right now? I don't do internet dating, that's for psychopaths. <laughs> uh, my name's Kosha Dills. Has anyone heard of it before, like tonight, or is... Woo! I gotta ask, I've been doing it for 19 years, you hope something happened already, you know? Give it up for all the comics tonight, Larry was great. Give it up for all the people that tipped $4 in here, that's... That means tech is running the city, you know? I don't carry cash, we'll see. <laughs> it's great. I'm gonna, uh, I have OCD, so... Um, if anyone has OCD, it's kinda cool. You hyper focus on things that, you, that aren't happening, like these crew whispering. This Asian dude, black dude, been whispering for years. <laughs> They've been like, he's in the middle of the conversation. It's like, I swear to fucking God, dude, I've been programming this thing for so long, it's crazy. But it's like, right, eighty five thousand dollars a year, so I'm at my point. And I'm like, nah, oh, man, my switch. Like, I got the MySpace, my MySpace page, my SoundClouds were fucking cracking. Where is fucking bond? And the boom boom boom, and you beat your mans in them, you know. So then I. Be like, no, I, you know, I got some of my book bag on from work. Like, what the fuck is? <laughs> What's your name? What's your name? What is it? Give it up for Andrew, everybody. <laughs> Andrew, I just literally gave a monologue about what you are. What's your name? No, next to you. Manuel. Manuel. An Andrew Manuel. Go to. And big Clifford and a big red dog. I just get I, when you guys were talking. I gave a whole. I do. I was just like, I was doing the whole thing. Whatever you guys were saying. I assumed that you were a programmer, and that you were a school teacher with your book bag, and you were like, I just uploaded this new ambient song for my SoundCloud. You gotta check out. <laughs> no, it's just because it's just because I come from New York, and someone will be like, shut the fuck up. You know, the other day I whistled at somebody. I cat called a man actually to ask him what time it was because my phone died. I'm, I, I suffer from privilege. I, <laughs> I was like, ew, what time is it? Has that ever happened to you? When someone cat calls you for a sincere reason because they wanted to know the time? I feel like that would be something that happened in San Francisco. <laughs> uh, San Francisco is an interesting city, I'll give it up. This is the first place I ever did a, a show outside. When I first started my music career, I came to San Francisco. I got booked to play eight Yom Hatzma Okiks, which are Israeli Independence Day shows in San Francisco, the most liberal place, where we had the most protests I ever had at my events for being Israeli. It was really great. But that wasn't what was specific about San Francisco. And uh, you might have heard Adam say that I was the number one Jewish rapper in Koreatown, right? Which comes from the history of the movie A League of Their Own. Hitting them where they ain't. Has anyone ever seen that with Madonna? You hit them where they ain't. And San Francisco was like that, but for drug addicts. So let me explain. San Francisco, over on one of these streets, it was the first place I experienced someone asking me for money for drugs. But instead of asking for a dollar, 50 cents, 25 cents, they continued to go up in price. The woman goes, hey, I, I, I remember it like it was yesterday. I th the, the street started with a T. It was like T.R. Troy or something, something like that. It was like, it was in, the, what? Turk, yes, Turk Street. It was in the, is it the Mission? Is that what it is? is that... Tenderloin. There was nothing tender about Turk Street, let me tell you. And the woman, and I'll, and I'll, 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 I'll do the impression of her. I do not know what drug she was on, but for all the drugs I've done, and I've been sober 19 years, I never experienced anything like this. She goes, excuse me. Do you have a dollar? Do you have like two dollars? Do you have five dollars? Can I get like twenty dollars? This is in one breath. 
It was almost like going on a date in New York, but reverse. It was a in San Francisco walking down the street. Excuse me, I have a dollar. Do you have two dollars? Do you have five dollars? Can I get like twenty dollars? Can I get a hundred dollars? Bitch, you just asked me for a hundred dollars. I just made fifty dollars to park in your city. God forbid I went to a Giants game. Oh my God. So that was my first experience. And I, I, I realized I was like, you know when they say cocaine is a hell of a drug? That person never went to the West Coast where the hippie movement was born and where people discovered crystal meth. I think like crystal meth puts a shame to cocaine addicts. It's just like another level. Cocaine is the JV, is the junior varsity basketball team to crystal meth. It says your crystal meth is the only drug that you can continue to do and just ask and demand more money. Because <laughs> you stay up for so many days. So you're just like, I might as well ask for 50 and 100, 150. So just a little bit about me. Um, I wasn't always a Jewish rapper named Kosha Dills. My first name was Ram. It is Ram, which means high exalted in Hebrew. My middle name is Matan, which means gift. So in middle school, all my Muslim friends called me Ramadan. <laughs> The first rap I ever wrote was Ramadan, drop the bomb on Notre Dame, shout out to my mom. <laughs> Which means a Muslim holiday about fasting at a Catholic genuine university in Notre Dame with attachment issues to his mother. Shout out to my mom. <laughs> um, being a Jewish rapper is a very interesting thing because you would just assume that all white Jewish kids love, love rap. That's why we started Value Culture. <laughs> I, I became a, a wild and out. I'm the only Jewish rapper on the show. Um, and the, actually, there's a new Jewish rapper on the show. His name's Frack. He's from the Bay. Um, the, has it, does anyone watch Wild and Out ever? You used to watch it. You guys know it? Pick up and kill it and kill it and kill it. Black people know this. It's a black television show, ladies. Show your solidarity. Stop fucking watching Friends. It's true story, true story. So I, the show was canceled for anti-Semitism, and I was the first person to be on the show after. Which I was totally fine with reverse, like, uh, what, you know, it's like, what, you, you know, um, what is it called? What, affirmative action? That's what's called. Reverse action. Finally, because I'm not in the music, music business. I, I'm not in the movie business. I, like, I need a job. So I was happy that it got canceled. I was like, this is my in. And Nick Cannon goes, Kosha, you know why you're on the show, right? And I was like, oh shit. Are we about to have that talk? You know what I'm saying? Like the fucking black Jewish talk? Are we about to get Farrah Kosha here? Like, you know? And he goes, Kosha, you know why you're on the show, right? I said, why, Nick? He goes, because I need a rapper on the show with no kids. Nick Cannon has 12 children, y'all. Like, what the fuck? He has Mariah Carey tattooed on his back. I have hair on my back. Like, <laughs> we are not the same. <laughs> he has 12 kids. He has more children than all my rabbis combined in Brooklyn. I could literally be on Wilding Out. If he has one more children, we'll give him a bar mitzvah on television for the amount of children he has. You know? Haba, Nagila, Haba, Nagila, Haba, Nagila, stop having kids. Haba, Nagila, Haba, Nagila, Haba, Nagila, get circumcised twice. <laughs> I have a whole remix to that, by the way. I am available for bar mitzvahs, quinceañeras, you know. Yeah. <laughs> are, are you Mormon? Hell yeah, I love it. You guys have the most, the best television shows, let's be honest. When, like, you guys are sort of, you guys are the reason why they had that EDM or what, what's the sign on, on dating sites? ENDM, uh, polyamorous shit. It was really inspired by you guys. Hot blonde bitches are coming in like, all right, fuck everybody, <laughs> look at these kids. Pop them all out. You know, this cool thing is I'm actually extremely popular in Utah. No, I mean, it is an amazing place to play. Before every show that I perform in Utah, I said, everyone put your fists in the middle, put your fists in the middle. And everyone's incredibly good looking. And even if you're not into white people, they're, they're just, they have the features of like, they didn't try to look like the way they tried. You know what I mean? And I just say, you guys are all Mormons, ready? Do this with me. One, two, three. Jews, 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 Jews. Jews, 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 Jews. <laughs>
And they do it. They do it. I can cancel them. I, mean, I wouldn't cancel anyone who buys all my merchandise, who's amazed. Because they're like, I love kosher dills. I can't believe I'm meeting a Jewish person. How much? It's an interesting thing, touring as a Jewish rapper. I've been to every state in America. I'm a true American. Give it up for all the states of America. The cool thing is that racism exists in every part of America except a couple places. And even in those places, we all hate each other anyway. Like New York just hates everybody equally. You know what I'm saying? It's like the biggest place for stop Asian hate. Right? And it's the biggest place where like Black Lives Matter ha happen, but you'll be the first place where you'll be like, yo, fuck you. You know what I mean? It's just still, it's still a thing. Um, I went to, uh, I want to tell you guys a story. Fuck, man, I, I lost a train of thought. I was going to tell you a story about a place of, um, oh yes, I know what I was about to, I toured, people I say, how Jewish are you? I toured with Modest Yahoo pre-beard and post-beard. <laughs> You guys remember Modest Yahoo? Skinny bop 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 Jerusalem, if I forget you. You know? Yeah, you guys remember the dude, the great rabbi on television and shit? Andrew? Okay. No, not right. Big tall Jewish dude sings reggae. <laughs> you know. Um, well, he's me, you know. You don't like him. I do, I do. Hate ass Mormon motherfucker. <laughs> Hey, more for that bitch. I feel like I've been in the West Coast too much. Yeah. <laughs> Listening to E40 before the show. <laughs> Hell yeah. That's cool. Anyways, let me get back to the story. We were in South Carolina, Andrew. Greenville, South Carolina. And during a, a tour with a, a religious Jewish rappers, there's always a prayer service after the show. So we get 10 men for a minion after the show. Now, usually in New York City, there's a bunch of black yarmulkes. You'll see the guys that have scraggly beard. You know what I'm saying? We know. Everyone's Mendel, Moisha, Shlomo, pay us. Not pay us, pay us. That's what they're called. Okay. And in Greenville, the, he, he had a rabbi, a, a young rabbi, who danced on stage. There would be a dancing rabbi in the singing rabbi show. Okay. And I was like, it was 2009. And um, all of a sudden, in this prayer service after the show, it was in Greenville, South Carolina. There was a bunch of like bright colored yarmulkes. There were pink ones and blue ones and yellow ones. It was like fucking Roy G. Bibb. It was it's kind of like San Francisco, actually. And I was like, yo, dude, these are all, they were all Jews for Jesus. <laughs> and the guy goes, how did you know, Kosha, how did you know that they weren't real Jews, right? And I said, they bought all my merchandise <laughs> without question. Because I have like Hebrew shit on my stuff, you know, it'll say, uh, you know, and then they were just like, they bought all of it. Because any other Jewish person, they were only wearing black and white, so I knew they weren't, you know, they wouldn't get my merch. Anyways. Become like a fucking religious uh, dissertation here. Um, where, where are you girls from? New Orleans, Louisiana. Okay, yeah. 30 years. 30 years? Yeah. Yeah, I know. You look like you drink. <laughs> when I saw you, I just thought crawfish and fucking alcohol. <laughs> and it's not a bad thing, you know, for a woman. I feel like crawfish is like another level. It's like, you know, a dish would be like, oh, it's not fish. You know, but crawfish is like a real ass woman. <laughs> like being hot with crooked teeth, but like, fuck, yeah, let's do it. You know what I'm saying? I don't want no fake shit. What about you? What about you? You're from here? What do you do for work? Fundraising. But, I mean, you're in the right place. I mean, you should listen. I mean, we're obviously doing fucking amazing here. <laughs> yeah, you go. Yeah, you must work. You do work for the. What's what? Well, like, what's your foundation? Like, let's pitch us all on it. Like, what do you? What do you? Do? You know, you help homeless people. No. Are you raising money for the f fires in Maui? No, not so much. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay. Well, aloha, bitch. Like, come on. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Uh, so are you work animal education? No, edible. Edible education. Yeah. Food education. Uh -oh. Or edible like marijuana edibles? Okay. Well look at you. Well I'm hungry. And there's cold pizza in the back that uh, Adam Swig brought for all the comedians. He said they don't mind cold pizza. They'll eat anything. Now it's worse. Savages. 
Um, I'm from New York City uh, the past three years. Um, I've been uh, sober 19 years. Anyone ever been sober before? Or obviously not New Orleans, but um, you, you're also sober? Anyone have a sober friend or a former drug addict uh, relative? Being sober is interesting. Uh, being sober is really interesting because um, you know in the beginning when you go to a 12-step meeting, they're like, keep coming back. It works if you work it, right? We don't need your money. Your money's not important. We want you to keep coming back. That was in 2004, right? 2005, 2006, they said, uh, you know, it's a, a recommended that it's a dollar. When they pass the basket around, they give a dollar, okay? There's a basket. Yeah, it's called a seventh tradition. They give it a basket. Everyone goes around and put the dollar, right? Uh, no, it's not, but yes. It's kind of like the Mormon religion. It's like that. Okay. <laughs> In New York City, you start, now, now it's like $2. I went to a meeting the other day, it was like a sex, love, and I was like a double dipper. It's called, it's for really fucked up people. That's where I go, babes. <laughs> That's where I go. They have a lot of those double dipper meetings in New Orleans. <laughs> and they asked for $3, $3. Could you imagine that, going to a place to get better, and I'm asking for $3. I could have just gone to a corner store and got a coffee. You know what I mean? And it's like, it's just, it's, you know, alcoholism is a, it's a horrible disease, but I don't know if it's worth $3. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know? I always have a good excuse. The time to you as well. <laughs> it's like, eh, it's not the same. Um, I had a bunch of jobs in my life, uh, but any, any job I had before being a rapper, I was a liar at. Anyone else a liar ever? To be honest, it's okay if you lied. I, I lied in a lot of my jobs. My first job um, was, uh, you know, vending machines. Um, I delivered pizza. And I was always supposed to deliver a fresh hot pie, right? It was a fresh hot pie. But every time I showed up, there was a slice missing. 45 minutes late, you know? I was 07, 08. And I, my whole purpose of me working there was to eat the food. That was the whole purpose, right? And then. Every time I shoveled snow, I said I would do a great job shoveling snow, door-to-door -door snow shoveling. And I, you know, I didn't really do the best job, you know what I'm saying? I knew, I was just, you know. And then uh, even when I was selling cocaine, I was the man with the grams. That was my thing, Andrew. I was the man with the grams. But anytime you got a gram from the man with the grams, it was always a half gram. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Um, <laughs> but a, a month before I got sober, back when people used to look in the classified sections for, uh, for, uh, for jobs, I, uh, became, uh, I did door-to-door -door cemetery sales. <laughs> Killing it. <laughs> or some say living it up. <laughs> But the funny thing is that when you call, you, you would have to call all these numbers. If you did to telemarketing, you're just calling and calling and calling. And you're like, hey, would you like to buy a cemetery plot? And what people thought was that you could get a cemetery plot, and I said, listen, you need to plan for your future. And my idea was I could sell somebody some cocaine, and then while they were you know, panicking about their life, that'd be the easy end. And there was a payment plan to buy your grave. Isn't that crazy? But what people didn't know, guys, is that you don't get buried if you get the plot. You need to pay for the opening and closing. Isn't that fucking amazing? <laughs> what, what that means is, imagine getting, a, imagine getting pizza and then you would have to pay for the box. <laughs> Mormons don't get this. Okay, I don't know where you guys are buried, but I need you to just picture this. You know how they say Jews won't get buried in a cemetery if they have tattoos? That's a lie, first off. But if you're here, okay, what's your name? Aaron, if there is, a, if, if there is your plot and you're about to get buried here in the Boom Boom Room, okay? Where all the good girls go. <laughs> and you're getting buried in the Boom Boom Room, right? You have to pay for me to dig the hole. It doesn't dig itself, and then you gotta pay for me to close it. And that's, yeah, that was the thing. So that was the thing, so I always lied in my jobs. What are they talking about back there? I was at Outside Lands this week. Oh my God, dude, I took microdosing. <laughs> that's probably it. 
Um, how are you guys doing now? Is there any locals here? A lot of locals? I want to tell you guys about some funny things. Uh, I, uh, I'm a big fighter of anti-Semitism. I, I don't know if you guys know about like, like rising anti-Semitism. Maybe, already, who's Jewish here? Who's the Jews? Identify yourselves, it's okay. Don't say who, just put your hands in here. It's safe here, okay? There's some Jews, Jews. You're Jewish right now, but you feel awkward, okay? Okay, there you go. There you go, you're Jewish, 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 Jewish. Enemies, and no, I'm just kidding. Just kidding, just kidding, just kidding, just kidding, get it, guys, get it. Holy shit, holy shit, it's okay. We want, you're an ally. Your religion started recently, but we appreciate it. I appreciate you, buy a lot of merch. Okay. Um, the reason why is that I fight anti-Semitism in New York, but I'm bald, and I want to explain this in the safest way. There was a thing that they started, you know, you ever see the people, there's this thing called the Goyim Defense League, have you guys ever heard of this? They go and they start beef out, they like wave swastikas outside, synagogue, they start shit all over. So they were doing that in New York City, so I'm like, fuck this, I'm gonna go and fight them, right? So it was, like, it was called the National Day of Hate. National Day of Hate, just imagine it. There's like a National Day of Love, there's National Bagel Day, and there's National Day of Hate. So I go to National Day of Hate, and I'm on the subway. Something happens, and boom! I show up, and I'm missing my hat. And I show up, and I see a guy over there. Hey, brother! Hey, brother! And I'm like, is he talking to me? And I walked over to the side and I see like, it's split up, there's police in the middle on the right, there's police middle on the left. Hey brother over here! And I walk over and I say, oh, shit. Brother, welcome. And I said, man, I'm never taking the L train again. <laughs> Some hipster took my fucking hat. <laughs> you know? Um, so listen, I guess the moral of that story is you could fight, you could stop Asian hate, you could fight for Black Lives Matter, but if you are bald, it is just difficult to fight against anti-Semitism. <laughs> and my name is Rami, and in, high, in college they used to call me Rami like the guy from Higher Learning. You know what I mean? It's, it was just fucked up, so I've just been dealing with it a lot. But, um, so, you know, speaking of being Jewish, I mean, I love being Jewish. Um, to celebrate Israel, I, I perform a lot at the Israel Day parades uh, in, in New York City. Um, I'm Israeli. Um, to celebrate Israel's 75th year of independence, I introduced my parents to my Palestinian girlfriend. <laughs> and you love that for me. <laughs> It was really cool. I was like, Mom, she's resistant at first. I'm like, Mom, it's okay. You're resistant. She's a member of the resistance. I, I met her on Hinge. I brought her to this place called Mahmoud's Falafel Spot. And uh, I was like, you know, trying to be sweet. She was a very intense girl, right, when I first met her. I'm like, hey, hey, have you ever falafel in love? She's like, have you ever falafel off a building? I was like, listen, it's the first date. You know what I'm saying? It's the first date free. The meal should be free, right ladies? Like the meal should be free, first date. You're looking at me like I'm a psychopath. Yes, you are someone ever. Would you like me to buy, yeah, I'm gonna pay. First off, listen, New Orleans, if I take you out, I'm gonna pay. Promise, first date, I will. Even if you drink, yeah, I mean, listen, I don't want you to, you know, I'm gonna have to, I don't want you to have a crawfish and hummus sandwich. Um, but listen, I said, listen, first date. Her name was Mariam, right? Kind of like Miriam, but Mariam. And I said, Mariam, I'm gonna pay, you know? She was like, I don't need a free falafel, I need you to free Palestine. And I said, okay, that's fair. How about this? Better yet, let's split the bill. She goes, oh, no, no, no. I said, oh, what, you're not into splitting things? <laughs> my father, you know, I introduced her to my father. My father said, my father's a super Zionist. He's like, you know what I don't like about this girl? She is from Palestine. Your last girl friend was from a, a Outlander in Scotland. Both places are make-believe. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking dark. 
But he is right. Outlander <laughs> is a fucking horrible show. <laughs> Uh, Andrew doesn't watch Outlander. That's a that's a that's a strong feminist joke for ladies who live in a romantic world. Um, I'm going to New Zealand next week. Anybody? Anyone like New Zealand? I'm going. I'm going to be the first Jewish rapper in Christchurch. Uh, <laughs> it's pretty awesome. Uh, <laughs> um, man, it's funny. I, I live in New York City. Anyone ever been to Penn, New York City before? Any raise your hand? You've been to New York City? All right, you have. You have, you have a right. I love it. You know, it's a whole thing now. They have the switching the bathrooms. They have the men's bathrooms. They have the girls' bathrooms. Now they have the gender bathrooms. I'm all about the, you know, gender-neutral bathrooms because just in New York City, people just shit on the floor. So anything that when people sharing the bathroom, as long as they're going to the bathroom, is kind of like what we're, you know, what we're aiming for. You know what I mean? Um, as I said, like being sober doesn't make you a good person, but I've been sober a really long time, but now I'm going through a lot of like, I'm like reliving my trauma, sort of going through a lot of trauma. Has anyone ever been to trauma therapy before? Well, you know you've never used psychotherapy, but has anyone ever gone to therapy, ladies? I know anyone from other countries have not, you know, but we'll just see. <laughs> um, so I, <laughs> you go to therapy? Fuck yeah, obviously you don't Mormon, Mormon loves. You do? Okay, there it goes, there it goes. Um, Andrew does not. He whispers. Yulia, you prescribe people medicine, is that right? You just, you just help them. She's a pharmacist, which is a nice way to say she prescribes drug addicts Adderall. Yeah. <laughs> um, so listen, I started going to therapy. And uh, I have a lot of spiritual friends, and I'm sure the tech world has this. You guys are from San Francisco? You work in? No, you live in, you live in an area somewhere? You have friends that, you have any friends that are like all into meditation, yoga, Bikram, they spend a lot of money on wellness, and they have this shit called silent retreats. Anyone here of the silent retreats? So my homie's like, yeah, he went to, goes to Burning Man, he has a fucking hula hoop, he's like one of those guys, right? You know? I fucking get it, your pants are extremely large once that spits off, I get it. He, uh, he was like, yo, Kosha, like, you can do this silent retreat for $2,000. Now, my therapist is a male therapist. I don't go to a female therapist. I need a man to teach me how to be a man. For real. For real, for real. Right? And he goes, and he's like an alpha male therapist. He goes, Rami, do you want to spend $2,000 to go on a silent retreat? Or you can just pay me $250 an hour, and I can tell you to shut the fuck up. You know? You want me to send all of the boo boo to sound retreat or should I tell son to shut the fuck up? <laughs> Welcome to therapy. <laughs> Seriously, oh my god, man. That was funny, dude, right? I love shutting the fuck up, yeah. Not like a big glass of shut the fuck up. Um, I know it's, uh, what was I gonna say about, uh, I'm old school, I, I really am an old school. Is anyone in their 40s, 30s, 40s? I'm in 40s, I'm in 40s. Ladies, you don't have to raise your hand, but I appreciate that, 40s. Um, I'm, I'm 41, about to turn 42. I'm old school. I come back from the trap phone era. You know, I used to have free paints. I want to, and just, just make some noise for me if you agree with this. Let's throw away our iPhones and go back to block phones. I'm a clap for myself. Chinese Jewish friends? Yes? No? Okay, okay, there you go. Clap for me anyway. I love you. Let's do away with emails and texting and go back to love letters. Say it louder for the guy that's talking to you. Yes. And ladies and guys, let's stop looking at Instagram stories and go back to traditional stalking. Say it with me, y'all. Bring back traditional stalking. Bring back traditional stalking. Bring back traditional stalking. Bring. Okay. Achla, I know the Israeli would be with me. <laughs> I am in the Mossad, but when I'm not in the Mossad doing missions, I am stalking women. <laughs> Personally, on my free time. <laughs> no, seriously, just because you didn't pay your phone bill doesn't mean that when you do get it back on, you need to text her 30 times just to make sure that she knows that you are responsible. Just because you don't have a car and live in San Francisco doesn't mean you shouldn't get a fucking Uber or city bike or a driverless car just to check her house to see who's parked outside. 
And just because you are unemployed doesn't mean you should not show up to his place of employment. <laughs> bring back traditional stalking. Bring back traditional stalking. Bring back traditional stalking. You too. Bitches are crazy. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> ah. <laughs> fucking psycho ass psychopathic bitches here. You look like the ladies I would do drugs with at this place called Plum Street Pub in New Brunswick. <laughs> ah, that's crazy. Yeah, no, I love traditional stalking. I throw an event called Bald Fest coming up, National Ball Day, September 13th. Give it up for the bald people in the building, everybody. Yeah. It's cool, we're like an equal opportunity. Uh, this year we have Eric Adams, the mayor of New York City, performing. <laughs> He's bald and black, so we are, you know what I'm saying, we are trying to bring the communities together because as you know, you know, sometimes people get the wrong idea. Um, it is cool, the unity between different people. Like if I was to say there was a Palestinian and Israeli peace process, it would be solved by two bald guys, you know what I'm saying? Because we can both agree that Turkey is the cheapest place to get a hair transplant. <laughs> You know, um, they, uh, we got on Stephen Colbert actually, which is really cool, right? I've been rapping my entire career and talking about being bald got me on Stephen Colbert. They compared us to the Fast and Furious, but Bald Fest is more for the Fast and Curious. <laughs> it is a crazy thing. Bald Fest is nuts. Um, man, what was I also going to tell you guys about? I was thinking about something real quick, and then I thought, uh, oh yeah, this is funny. Uh, stalking my ex-girlfriend, no. Oh, no, no, no. no man, anyone, anyone uh, go through a breakup? Anyone ever been through a breakup? Yeah. What's like the years for, like, how much time does it take for them to get into a rebound relationship? You know? Yeah. Three, oh shit. My ex is in a rebound relationship right now. But you know what they say about Jewish girls? They're not good at basketball. <laughs> I love the Mormon laughs at all the Jew jokes. She's like, oh, I'm gonna use all, all my Jewish friends. That was the first time I was trying some shit out, you know what I mean? Um, I was gonna say, uh, for the fucking, I don't know why this is one thing, microdosing, no. Uh, oh yeah, so this is actually, uh, me and Adam, me and Adam went to uh, Poland this uh, summer. Uh, I made a dark comedy of, uh, on the Holocaust. It's fine, my whole family was killed there, so I decided that was cool. But we actually got a Holocaust survivor in the movie who agreed to do it, um, which is great. We work with a Holocaust survivor. We brought the first Holocaust survivor out to Clubhouse to speak for 50,000 people. Um, it was pretty amazing, actually. I drove to Harlem and we got him in, and he's like, he's like wants to be, a, he wants to tell a story, you know? And um, the thing was just crazy is that like, the entire, it was, it was inspired by a real experience because once I went to the uh, um, concentration camps in 2015 with my mother, I met some guys from uh, Norway and Sweden. There's nowhere to go to the bathroom in uh, Birkenau. It's really big and, uh, and it was the beginning of the selfie era so no one knew what to do, you know? Like, and I just need to remind you like the beginning of the selfie era. Right now we have some limits and boundaries, but then they were like, ovens, this, that. Rocks, trains, no bathrooms. The guy pissed right in the middle of the field, and uh, my great aunt was so pissed off. So, you know, we made it's a dark comedy about me looking to go to the bathroom and uh, swiping, you know what I'm saying, in there. And, uh, you know, I'm submitting this film today to Sundance, actually, which I'm really excited because it's gonna actually stir up alternative conversations because no one, none of us can have real conversations, you know what I'm saying? That's why we have to bring back traditional stalking. Yeah. <laughs> Don't you fucking know what I have to tell you? Why we need to be together? <laughs> um, no, but I played a Jewish festival in Krakow. Now, mind you, the crazy thing in Poland, there are 14 Jewish festivals. Listen here, Aaron the Mormon. Former Mormon. Say that five times fast. Former, 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 former. So listen, there's 14 Jewish festivals in Poland, right? And uh, it's called the Krakow Jewish Culture Festival. So Value Culture sponsors it. And me and Adam did a talk. 
and we try to, like any festival, go backstage. The festival is run by non-Jewish people, right? Just like the hip-hop industry. <laughs> Which is why I never got a record deal, because I was a Jewish rapper. I was like, come on, guys. They're like, you don't get what we're trying to do here. No. <laughs> so I went backstage, and they kicked us out. <laughs> And I said, did I, the Jewish rapper, get kicked out of the Jewish festival? <laughs> you know? And Nick Cannon goes, well, we'll take you for a while now. Wild it, wild it, wild it, wild it, wild it. Yeah, man. I love being the Jewish rapper on a black television show. It's so fucking cool. It is, you know? Cause like whenever I have, I'm like, hey guys, let's celebrate Shabbat. And they're like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> but with the most due respect, and um, <laughs> and it's cool. I was in. I tell everyone. I said, what's the difference between being like on a big Jewish festival or a music festival and being on Wild and Out? And any time I go to the airport, TSA or the security guard is like, yo, Wild Out. <laughs> I went to the Taylor Swift concert the other night. Motherfuckers is raping people for a hundred dollar parking. And I said, yo, check this shit out. I said, I'm the Jewish guy, wild it out. And he goes, fam, wild out. <laughs> let me go. It's on, my, it's on my Instagram. I'm rapping in a pink hat about Taylor Swift trying to make money from single mothers from New Orleans that are wasted. Taylor gating. You know? Yeah, it's just fucking, it, it, and so I got recognized today at TS, by, by TSA, and it's just like, my hood cred is forever at Eschen Stone, you know what I mean? It's the most amazing concept, and the cool thing is that everywhere I go, if I wear the Wild and Out thing, I have, it's like my ultimate hood pass, you know? It's like a white person's library card. I just, like, I just wear it, like, yo, I'm just good everywhere. Um... It's been really awesome hanging out with you guys. Big Comedy is my new side quest. Uh, I'm sort of like my side hoe of music career. You know what I mean? Because I'm a while and out now I can make people laugh. I'm slowly working up the echelon of woman. A lot of... You guys are all strong fives and sixes here. We're all, we're all fucking doing our thing, man. Listen, I'm not, I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect. Yeah. No, but listen. I would rather take a relationship with you than a, an available aid, you know? Um, listen, we're gonna do a little rap, a little freestyle rap for you guys. You guys like some freestyle rap? So, uh, we're gonna give you guys, we're gonna do this thing, it's gonna be a We Will Rock You Beat, right? Have you guys, have you guys ever done? I wanna tell one more joke about my ex-girlfriend. I just have to say this on off the record, or I don't know if someone's, there are certain things that you know when it's not meant to be. And she didn't know who Coolio was. Oh, shit. And neither did fucking you guys. <laughs> what the fuck? It was just the most amazing. Anyways, anyways, I'm gonna go into it. So everybody, show me your hands like this. We're gonna do this everyone. This is the thing we're gonna go like this. You guys gotta do it too. He, he made it like two weeks. Yeah. He didn't even know what he was gonna do. He was gonna get to 50. There you go. Hey. Go. Boom, boom. All right, appreciate you people. Hold up. I feel it often. I like my one drum friend from Tucson who's still talking. Deals on the microphone, kick it, it's all fair. Shout out to my crawfish lady, pretty with blonde hair. Rhyme and so delicious, rhyme and so delicious. Please stop doing that, eating the crawfishes. You keep it ill, no Indian rock fresh. My Jewish friend ironically has a red laser on her head. Dills on the microphone, I kick it ill in the background. Indian food and all my friends who act wild. I'm talking on the beat, rapping on the street. I'm not a weird white guy, stop grabbing his me. I can understand I love to bust raps. This guy's appreciating me with his girlfriend and mustache. All right, Dills on the microphone on the low like a muskrat. The one black dude's like, no, fuck that. Anyways, plenty ways, heavyweights, action. I can tell you feel it awkward and not relaxing. Kicking this message, I love my rap tune. And your hot girlfriend went to do coke in the bathroom. Yo, Dills on the beat, my first fear. I can tell you like, who the fuck actually works here? I put my pants up, rap is the answer. Everybody make noise for the bartender working by himself. Xander! Uh, give it up for your host, Adam Swift.
away from that, you got Scotia Deals, Scotia Deals, World now, VH1, check them out, get your TiVos, I want to shout out Stephanie Block, Howdy Block, 